In this video, I'm going to show you a quick, easy and dirty way of predicting animations. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, we have this kick animation and this is the animation I'm going to use for this example. For example, I want to predict before he kicks something, if he's going to hit something, if that makes sense. I want to figure out if there's anything in my path uh, and do something about it. Now, if you're an advanced user, you probably don't need to see the rest of the video. If I just tell you that the way we're going to do this is by having an invisible mesh that is going to play the animation to prediction animation, check out if there's anything in our path, and then we decide if we play the animation with our actual mesh that is visible in the game. So it's a dirty way to do it, but it's really easy to implement. There's a few things I need to set up first, including the animation notifies and things and the playing the animation part of the, uh, of the tutorial. So if you're a beginner, I suggest you keep watching. If not, you can just jump to the recap. I'll leave a, a, a jump link in the description below. So you can just jump to the recap if you're an advanced user. If not, let's get going, let's get started. So this is a third person example project. And all I've did here is I imported this animation that you're just looking at. And I went into the mannequin folder, into the materials, and I created a material instance, which if I open it, you see that I just turned body color on and I created a color here. This is just a reference so that you can see what's really gonna be happening. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a trace and that's going to be the trace that we're going to predict. I want to create a trace in his leg so that that we can check if we hit something or not. So if I go into my third person blueprint here and I go to blueprints, I'll open up my third character, third person character and I go to my event graph and this is what I get. Let me first uh, trigger the animation somehow. There's a million different ways of triggering animations in Unreal Engine. I'm gonna go for the simplest one. So I'm just gonna right click and press Q to find my Q key so that I can trigger it. Okay, and I'm just gonna say play animation. So this is probably not, probably the worst way of uh, triggering an animation here but I'm gonna go with this, okay? So play animation from the mesh. And I select this animation that I just imported. And I'm just gonna put a print string here that is gonna say pressing Q, so that you know when I'm pressing Q. Okay, so save, compile, and to make this easier, I'm just gonna go into a new editor window. And if I press Q, pressing Q, and the animation plays. Of course, because this is not connected, uh, I didn't change it, this in the animation blueprint. Uh, now I lose all my other stuff. But uh, for this example, it should work. Okay, that's set up. We'll be back here in any second. Now we need the notification uh, for an animation notify to trace our leg. And let's do that. So for this, we're gonna need an animation um, notify state. So I'm going to add a new blueprint. I'm going to go down here to all classes and I'm, I'm going to say notify and I'm going to look for a notify state. So notify state, select that. Notify left leg. Let's open that up. And I'm going to go to an override here and I'm going to override the receive notify tick. So the receive notify tick will trigger when we tell them to trigger in an animation montage or in an animation. So let's just check out what the heck am I talking about. Let's print a string here and it's just going to say hello. Okay, I'm going to save, compile, and now I'm going to go into my animation. So now if I right click my notif one of my notify tracks, which I only have one, and I go to no notify state, which is what I just created, I can see that my notify leg, left leg is there. And it creates this little notify here. Okay, and this is the length of the notify. This part of the animation is going to trigger this receive notify tick. Okay, what, what we get here, the mesh comp and the animation. The mesh comp is the mesh in which is being triggered and the animation is the animation that's being triggered at the moment. So let's see what this does. I'm here, I'm all happy with my character. I press Q, hello. All those frames have been triggered on that part of the animation. Okay, so saying hello is not really going to help me anyway. So let's actually create a trace. 
Now you can use a box trace or a sphere trace. I've I've looked into it, but I couldn't find anybody talking about which one is better. But in my opinion, I mean, a box trace looks like it's going to trace less than a sphere trace. But hey, you will use a box trace by channel in the world context is going to be my mesh. And now I need a start and position and a half size. So here the half size is going to be the radius. So if I just drag this out and plus plus vector plus int, I can just select a radius here. Okay, so let's do uh, let's do ten and we'll see what that's going to give us. So for the start and the end, I'm going to I'm going to use bones. So if I just uh, get my socket location, okay get socket location and that works for bones and sockets not just sockets so I'm gonna use two of them and I'm gonna have a starting bone and an end bone so let's look at our skeleton if I come down here and I open up my mesh skeleton okay so it's my leg I wanna figure out maybe the from the knee to the foot so if I just click my knee here you can see that that's the tie that's the calf so yeah that's fine from the calf left because this is my left leg so i'll grab that name and say calf underscore l for calf left that's why i'm going to start our trace and i want to end my trace at the foot right or maybe at the end of the foot the ball okay so ball l ball left so that's where i'm going to end it so ball underscore L for left. That's where my trace is going to end. I'm going to have a radius of 10. Okay. Okay, so actors to ignore. I'm already ignoring myself. That's fine. And right now I'm tracing the visibility channel. So if I go back to my third person character and I select my mesh, I want to see if my mesh is actually blocking my visibility. No, it's set to ignore. So let's go to camera. I hope I'm doing this right. Uh, we'll test this in a second anyway. So in order to see our trace, I'm going to have to turn on the debug mode and I'm going to just select for duration and turn this to one second. So red is going to be the color of the trace and green is if we hit something. So now if I go back to my animation with my debug on, you can see if I scrub to the timeline here, my debug box starts appearing and it's always red because it's not going to hit anything. If I just play, that's what I get. To check if we have a hit, I'm going to, well, I'll just grab the mesh itself here, place it in there and let's try and play this. Oof. Okay, so you see that it turns green. Every time it turns green, it's hitting it. So you know he have a hit there. So if I just come back here and okay that's where I hit I hit my mesh cool it's working okay so now I want to do something with that so I'm gonna go back to my notify and I gotta figure out a way of notifying my character because I want to do something in inside my character right and all I'm gonna do in this example is just print a string saying that I hit something so I could do the, the print string here but you probably want to do something inside your character blueprint so let's look at how we can do that so the first thing I can do is just come here to the return value and uh, just do a branch. So I only want to know if I hit something. If I don't hit something, I don't care about it. Then I want to tell my character blueprint that I hit something. So I can just come here and say get owner. If you use, this is better if you use an interface, but for this example, to make this simple and short and sweet, I'm just going to go and cast, okay? I hate casting, I wouldn't do this, but I'm just going to cast so that we make this simple. We don't have to do an interface and I don't have to show you how to do an interface. So by casting, I have access to any variables that my third person character blueprint may have and functions as well. And of course, I just remembered that you can also use apply damage and you got different apply damage uh, stuff here and might want to use point damage so if you use the apply point damage you can then in the character blueprint any damage okay this is one way you can do it so the apply point damage and let's let's see how we, how we can do this let me just show you 
So if I say apply point damage, apply point damage is going to need a few things. It's not just going to uh, break its result here. And he's going to have the int info. He wants the hit info. He wants the damage causer. And the damage causer is who's kicking. In this case, he's going to want the damage actor. And that would be the hit actor. Okay, and if you have zero, that, that's not going to do anything. It's not going to trigger the other node. So you have to have at least one there. And what is this is going to do is when I kick somebody, that somebody hit from direction. Okay, what do you want? Okay, this would be the location or the impact point. Okay, so save, compile. Okay, so when I hit somebody, that somebody is going to get this apply point damage notification. All right, so in the case that we have right now, let me just uh, got damage. In the case that we have right now, like this red, nothing would happen if I just kick that mesh, okay? So if I come here and I kick that guy, nothing's gonna happen. Why? Because I just uh, placed the mannequin there. I didn't place the character blueprint. But if I come here and grab the character blueprint here, place a character blueprint there, and I come to him and I kick him, got damage. Okay, he got damage. Right, but I want to know if I hit something, right? So in that case, I have to go to my notify here, and I have to use this, okay, the costing. Or if you're using an interface, you could just use an interface in that case. Um, the reason why I did this get damage is just to show you that you can also do something if you can you can also predict if you're going to get kicked and do something about it. So for now I'm just going to turn this off and I'll leave you to to your thoughts with that and uh, let's remove this. We don't need this for this example right now. So I'll just bypass this and this tutorial is getting pretty big. But I'll do a recap at the end so you don't have to watch these again. So here, the third person character blueprint. Now, I can trigger events, I can trigger functions, I can change variables using that costing note. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a custom event here. And I'm going to call it hit something. Okay? Just call it hit something. And all I'm going to do is just print a string. That's all I'm going to do in the character blueprint. And in the notify, now I can grab that event hit something right hello so I can trigger that event and I'll do you one better I am going to click on this event I'm gonna add an input right of an actor I'm gonna call it hit actor and I'm just gonna grab the actor you could hit grab the hit result if you wanted to so actor and I'm just gonna grab an actor reference object reference okay hit something and I'm gonna just copy that because I'm lazy grab an append and I'm gonna say I hit something two dot space and what did I hit I hit this guy I wanna know his name alright well, that's all I'm gonna do so save that compile and now here I can give it the hit actor that's who you hit okay and when did you hit it well when you got a hit Okay, return note. Okay, forget that apply damage thing right there. You can also do a branch here and check if it's a success that you cast it to the third person blueprint. But I leave that up to you. That's debugging stuff. Okay, so let's see what happens. I hit this guy and I hit something. The SK mannequin. Okay, what if I hit this guy? I hit the third person character to blueprint. Right? That's cool. So let's get to our prediction now. And you know what? I'm going to use the apply damage as well. So I'm going to come here. Boop. Boop. So I'll hit something and whoever got hit is going to say something. Or what is it going to say? He's going to say something like, uh, let's append this. I'm sorry for this tutorial being so long. Again, you can look at the description below and you'll find links to the recap and that will save you some time. And I got hit by the damage causer. 
course, this is only going to work on a third person character, not on a mesh. So now, there you go. I hit test K mannequin. He doesn't know I hit him because he doesn't have any logic for that. But this guy does. So he got hit by me and I hit him. So if you don't know about the events, I'm using event any damage here. I could use uh, a specific event for the, the point damage. You can use a radial damage and other types of damage. Uh, so look into that if you don't know what they do and what they are. Now, I think we got enough to start now looking at what we are actually here for. And like I said in the beginning, the way we're going to do this is by using another mesh. So if I come to this mesh and I press Control W to duplicate him, I'm going to call this guy Prediction Mesh, okay? And it's exactly the same mesh. The only thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change his material to the instance I created earlier, which is yellow, okay? So if I grab him and I place him here, this is going to be my Prediction Mesh. I can duplicate this animation right here and say you are going to track this uh, trigger this animation oh one thing that i forgot to do is figure out which mesh has triggered the animation so in the hit something event right here i'm going to add another one and i'm going to say and this is going to be a skeletal mesh component if i just go mesh component object reference and that should do it if i save compile now I come back to my notify, I grab my mesh here, and I can place it there. That's the mesh that triggered the animation. Okay, so now that I know which mesh triggered the animation, I can tell if it was my prediction mesh or my other mesh, and I can do stuff about it. Like coming here to the event, I'll pull this back, and I'm going to ask if this guy is equal to my prediction mesh. And if that's the case... I can do a branch, right? And if it is equal to my prediction mesh, this is a prediction. Okay, if it is a prediction, I can do something. And I'm just going to duplicate this stuff here. And I'll call this I will hit. Okay. So if it is a prediction, I'm going to go down there. I will hit that guy. If it's not a prediction, okay, I hit. Okay, so will hit and hit. And I'm actually going to change this one as yellow to say that that's just the prediction. While this one is going to be green as that is the actual hit. So because this is an example, I'm going to do this really dirty and quick. I'm just going to look for my E key here. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to use my E key to predict. And of course you can do this in any way you want. And applying. Okay. Predicting and applying. And what we're going to get is now we have two meshes. One is going to predict, right? I will hit that guy. And the other one is going to actually apply. Applying and I hit. Okay, and this one gets damaged, remember? So I will hit that guy. And I hit that guy. Now, that guy's got got hit, right? So I, I need to figure out if this is a prediction hit or if it is an actual hit. And there's there's two ways of doing this. Well, there's probably more ways of doing this that I can think right now. But one way is if I set a Boolean value here saying that I'm predicting and, and then unset it here when I'm applying. And then here I could go here and cast to the third person blueprint and check if that's variable on or off. And that's going to tell me if it's a prediction or not a prediction. Another way I can do this is instead of using the apply point damage, I could use an event just like I used here. Okay, so let's go with that second approach. I just created uh, an event on my character blueprint and here I just got rid of the, the point damage. And you know what? I'm just going to duplicate these, right? 
and I'll call this something else save compile I got the hit actor and I got the mesh so on the on here I can if I just duplicate this I got the hit actor and I think I can just do that and call in got hit right so I'm gonna tell the guy that got hit he got hit so who is got hit He's got hit by this guy and he's got hit by the hit actor okay okay now if, if I just hook up this like that got hit and I see what mesh hit me and I play well the mesh was the SK mannequin on the prediction and when the hit goes is the SK mesh zero on the prediction which is this one is the second mesh here one thing that I can do real easy, if I go to my prediction mesh and I create a tag, then I can access that as a tag. So if I just go here and, pre and say tag, you I already had it one here, right? So let me just delete it and show you how you do it. You just look for tag component tags and you write something down. Predict. Predict is the one I'm going to go for. So if I ask for as component as tags, okay, and I write down the tag that I just gave it to him now I can use that to figure out if it was the predict mesh okay or if it was the actual hit and now I will get hit by it gives me a yellow color and the red color is I got hit by so I'll save I'll compile I'll play I come to this guy and if I press my prediction predicting he says I will get hit by and I say I will hit okay if I press my actual applying animation applying that guy says I got hit and I say I hit and I hit him and he got hit by me actually I made a mistake I got hit in the hit actor well the hit actor is not this this is myself actually so the hit actor is the other guy right there so now I should get the right information when I kick him I will get by, hit by third person character I will hit third person character too and if I press the actually apply animation I got hit by third person character and third person character hit third person character too okay so that's a quick and easy way of do, doing it the, the video actually this video has not been quick I'm sorry about that but like I said you got the recap so you can just go to the recap and it will jump you right to this end section of the video now um, of course I'm triggering this with just keys but you could use functions to trigger this trigger display animation with the prediction mesh figure out what you want to do and then decide if you're actually going to play the animation with the mesh one thing I haven't done is that the mesh is showing up in the in the screen so of course you will want to come down here select your prediction mesh come down here and look for visibility and you say hidden in game so when it's hidden in game I do my prediction and there's the hit prediction the hit and then I decide if I actually gonna play the animation okay and of course you get get rid of oh we got a we got a problem here got hit because my target because my target wasn't valid at the moment so instead of uh, impure cast uh, uh, pure cast I'll just convert this to impure cast and say only if it's valid and now I should be able to predict and attack and no errors great okay let's do a recap in our character blueprint we duplicated our mesh and we got another mesh which we called prediction mesh and from that prediction mesh we are playing the predict animation what we call a predict animation which is going to be the same animation that we're going to play our on our mesh I used keys you can use events if you like and if I go here on the left we got two events we got got hit and we got hit something so both events are getting the hit actor 
and both events are getting the mesh which is a component of the blueprint okay so here on the hit something we check if this is our prediction mesh and if it is our prediction this is a prediction so we output the string saying I will hit if it's not the prediction mesh then it's not a prediction so we will output I hit down here when we got hit when you get hit we're going to check if the mesh as a tag called predict. Why? Because on the prediction mesh we added a tag called predict. So with this we can determine if who hit us is a prediction or is the actual hit. So we'll get hit by in yellow and got hit by in red or orange. Now in our notify we did create a notify and we applied it here to our animation and it's right down here in notify so we did the add notify state here and the way we created the notify state is by adding a blueprint class we came here we said notify and we select animation notify state okay and this is the animation notify state and if we open it up that's where our logic is so we came to override and here in override we selected receive notify tick and then we we created a box trace by channel you can create a sphere trace by channel if you like or by object we selected the trace channel to be the camera why because both our capsule if i close this both our capsule blocks the camera and our mesh also blocks the camera so we said in this trace we want to trace the camera channel so for our start and end locations for our start location we selected calf l and that comes from our skeleton calf l down here if i can select it uh, actually calf l is the knee so here we go calf l that's where i got the name from and for the foot which is the end location i got this ball l okay you can see it there ball l that's the end location i got i used to get socket location to figure out the location of the bones because it works for bones not just for sockets then for the half size i dragged out the pin i pressed the plus symbol and this is the first that comes out and this is going to be the radius of your box so i we used 10 a works for our example then I just use the branch there uh, just to make sure that we hit something and if we hit something I went and came down here pulled out the pin from mesh comp I select I chose get owner to get this and from get owner I was able to cast to the third person character which is um, the mesh that is playing the animation and this is gonna go into the target actor uh, hit something saying that the target actor hit something do something about it and for the hit actor we give it the hit actor who he hit and for his mesh we got the mesh uh, component then we dragged out of the hit actor we cast it to the third person character to the character blueprint out of the third person character we called the gut hit event okay we call the got hit event we said that the it actor is this guy right the guy that actually played the animation and we said that the mesh that hit us is the mesh from the animation right here and with that we were able to use prediction and uh, uh, the actual animation and the result was this We can predict and we can do something about it we can predict and then maybe attack of course one thing that I, I didn't say is that the prediction mesh is not visible in game it's hidden in game okay I think that's enough for the recap I think you got that from the recap you can not see the whole video again so that's it guys I hope this helps you in any way this is just a trick it's just a, a dirty example of how you can do this 
uh, if you want to predict where you're going to step on, you might want to use animation curves. And you know what? I'm going to leave you a link for a really good video using animation curves that will tell you where your next step is going to be. And also, if you're jumping with your character and you want to know where he's going to land, you might want to look into predict project projectile path. Okay. You might want to look at this predict projectile path. Uh, nodes or look for videos about him there's quite a few out there and you can predict where something's gonna hit you can do so much cool stuff about this check these out as well so that's it guys I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video I hope this helps you out in some of your crazy visual coding that you've been doing and I'll see you